Hey, Bonnie. Hey, I'm sorry I'm so late. I couldn't figure it out for whatever reason. Well, well, so, I did not send well. you the code. I you, uh, you hadn't been here in a while, so I didn't send you the code. So thank you for being here. We appreciate having you here. I was just saying you're a special education attorney with Toner Law Offices. Tell us a little bit about them. Toner Law Offices is uh, based in San Jose. We have 10 attorneys, I believe. We do special education, disability re uh, discrimination, regional center stuff, conservatorships, you name it as it relates to disabilities and special education. Um, we do this show to try to educate you about your legal rights as a parent with a, a child in special education or person in special education. The law is intended to be um, something that you can access and understand. It's not supposed to be out of reach the way parents um, understandably feel as it's gotten more formalized over time. Anyway, we give general advice on the show. It's not specific to a problem that you may have. If you have that kind of a problem and you're in California, we'd ask that you give us a call. We'll set up a free consultation for you. If you're not in California, we'd recommend you to find a lawyer out of state. People get much more and they do better in these disputes if they're represented by an attorney. So we would refer you to COPA, www at COPA, C -O -P -A -A dot net, And they have a list of, of attorneys in the 50 states. And I would have a conversation with one of those people. I just think you're going to end up a lot better off. And probably with that, we can jump right into our discussion. Um, you had sent a question about, about, um, about comp ed, which I'm going to have you read. But, yep. but before you read it, I just want to say, you know, uh, I talked to a new attorney this morning and I, I said to her that last year was weird because I'd been a special education attorney for a long time. But all of a sudden, because of COVID, everything changed. And I had a sense that I didn't know what the rules were anymore. And she said it was interesting for her as well, because she works with much more experienced attorneys. She's not inexperienced. She's been doing this for five or six years. I don't remember. But she said she was working with attorneys that had you know, been doing this for many, many years. And she said for them, it sort of leveled the playing field because everybody was having to figure out what happened. So I shared on the show a couple of weeks ago that I went to a mediation and I and I talked about how it was becoming really obvious that the district's view this period of time since March 2020 as some something uh, a time period for which they have liability because they did not materially implement people's IEPs as written which is the standard that they have to um, abide by. And the mediator said, yeah, well, that's because the districts all thought they were going to get a free pass during COVID. And then the federal government said no waivers in April or May. And so all of a sudden it was too late. The damage was done. So if you have a case because your IEP wasn't implemented from March 2020 forward, and you probably do have a case if you have an IEP, you might want to consult an attorney. So I said to this attorney I was speaking to this morning, the one with five or six years, I said, I guess the districts are looking at it now like, well, what they want to do for the next year or so is get a waiver from the client because they know they have liability. She goes, well, it's actually more like two years. Wow. So so the districts, the districts are settling cases. They're settling them without filings for due process. It's a good time. It's a good time to get in line and get your swag, guys. You know, it really is. It's not, this isn't going to happen again for a while. I hope. Is it me you know, though? The lockdowns. Right. Is it me though? I feel like um, the, the, the first step with the school district though, is that they're trying to gaslight parents and be like, no, you can't have anything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go away. And that you kind of have to show them some muscle. I feel like. Is that I'd say it depends. I'd say it depends. It depends. Some of them are fighting on, like I have this one case and I really think it should settle, but it sort of stands out because the other cases that I have, it's like, um, it's a good breather for me because it's so hard to do special ed. It's so exhausting. There's so much fighting. This is like my fighting break where I'm just making settlement after settlement. So but enjoy I, it. But I feel like break. part of the, I'm sorry, Go you go ahead, Bonnie. Well, I was gonna say, enjoy it while it lasts folks and get an attorney. Yeah, I anyway. think that's the most important takeaway is to get the attorney. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like if you get the attorney, then it's time to settle. 
So I think the attorney well, is super the Senate, worthwhile. Because, because you need to know what your case is worth. <laughs> yes, I agree. There's, but I think that if you don't, it feels like they're not, that they're, like this question, I feel so bad for this parent. Uh, let me read it and then everybody can will I see what say, I mean. Can I just say one yeah. more thing before we get to the question? Yeah. The other thing they're having real trouble with is um, they needed to have an, you know, an IEP meeting for every kiddo to get them back into school. And they also yeah. were required to, to write an emergency plan in the event that school is, is uh, shut for more than 10 days. So um, there's case law that says that those emergency plans can't be generic. If, if you look at yours, it's probably totally generic. So that's another basis of liability. And then with respect to the evaluations that they've done uh, since um, attempting to kind of get back into this, let's just take LA Unified. Because of their politics, they didn't do any face-to-face -face assessments. So they did IEPs where the assessment report would itself say, this is probably not a valid measure of the student's ability because we did this over Zoom, or this is probably not a valid measure of the student's ability because we're relying on data that's two years old. So the, the IEP I want to talk about um, after we get through the question is an IEP where the district wrote me and they said, we want to have a meeting to offer you comp ed. And I thought, huh, that's a trip. This has only happened to me once before at the IEP level, and that was, you know, 20 years ago. So uh, after we get through the question, I want to tell you what happened at my IEP where they offered comp ed. Okay. So the question was, and I, I feel like I'm hearing this in so many different ways from parents, but this uh, caregiver wrote it and said, my daughter's school made no attempt to provide the services in her ARD, like speech, OT, et cetera. I didn't know because she was back at school. I found out by accident. I have asked for comp ed and they said she is not eligible for summer school because she did so well this year. And we believe that this is because we hired a tutor. What do we do now? We are in Texas. She has global delays and an ASD diagnosis. Well, you know, it's a material failure to implement the IEP and that's the standard. And you, you know, you have to show that you that there was educational harm, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Texas is kind of a tough place, but I think if you get a lawyer, and there are good lawyers in Texas, I think you will be able to get comp ed for her. But it sounds like they're it sounds like they're uh, they're stalling to see whether you're going to give up and go away or whether you're going to push through. But whether well, the material it's failure to implement the IEP and the student get, didn't get. Um, the rest of their services. I don't really think a hearing officer is going to buy it. Like, oh, well, you didn't need an aid because you had your mom. Oh, you didn't really need speech therapy because you got it through Zoom. Districts are really afraid of taking those cases to hearing. This district's just bluffing. That's what I think too. But I, there is this weird thing right now that there are some families that were getting such, I'm just going to, you know, like I, I'm sure that the school was trying to do their best. But they, the kiddo wasn't getting something that was of educational value to them because we know this because the child stayed home for a period of time, six months or a year, and had mom or somebody at home, or in some cases like this family, hired a tutor. And all of a sudden, these kids made so much more progress. And well, that the then, schools are, are hanging their hat on them. If they What's want that? to say they can't have it both ways, if they're saying that they made so much progress, then the argument is the prior IEP was not appropriately ambitious enough because the expectations and the goals for a year was surpassed in three months or whatever it was. They can't really get out of this, you guys. That's what they I feel like. It. It's just but it a question feels like of a shell game. It feels Shannon, like a shell game. Like they're saying Shannon, to the. It's always a shell game. <laughs> Well, I don't like to think of it that way. I'm a former teacher. We're, we're supposed to go into the classroom and want to help educate our kids. I realized COVID most, was different. Most, Shannon, most people are not willing to be fired over a principal. So most people are not going to go into an IEP and go, yeah, the district's lying to you. I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah, they're right. going to do what they're told. You know, I mean, so, I, could get, I could get way out there and say, look at how many people opposed the German government during World War II. But I'm not going to go there. But you know what I what I have been telling people lately, my like little thing of the week is 
After all these years of doing this, the thing that makes districts most uncomfortable isn't arguments about the facts or the failure to uh, offer FAPE or the failure to make the student progress. The thing they're most uncomfortable with is I go in there and I lecture them on how the system is broken and they're complicit in it. And because they won't offer FAPE at the IEP, they're taking much more money out of the public school system than if they would just do the right thing now. They are really offended by that. That's what pushes their button. I Well, I think it, the answer is get a lawyer, everybody. And and I know as Shark said, you're not going to be able to do it on your own. I agree. Uh, this power. is the word to get the lawyer. Exert the power. Don't let these people act like they like you're a second grader. You know, absolutely. They're here. So tell us what happened. Okay, I will. I want to read something first, though, because I like to I like to have things to read. So just quickly. When compensatory education is an appropriate remedy for a denial of FAPE, courts and hearing officers may apply a variety of factors, including principles of fairness, to reduce or enlarge the amount of the award. So in other words, compensatory education is generally defined as educational services above and beyond that normally due to a student under his state's education law. While compensatory education is not a remedy expressly identified in the IDEA, courts and administrative hearing officers have awarded it in appropriate circumstances by exercising their authority to, quote, grant such relief as the court determines is appropriate. State educational uh, agencies may also award compensatory education. State educational agencies uh, if they determine such relief is appropriate in a particular case. So that means CDE, like in California, California Department of Education, if you make a compliance complaint and they file and, and they find that the district's out of compliance, they can make an order for comp ed. So that's something to know. Anyway, um, comp ed should, should aim to place disabled children in the same position they would have occupied, but for the school's violations of the IDEA because it's an equitable remedy, principles of equity and fairness come into play and may impact whether comp ed is awarded. For example, if the parents acted unreasonably in, let's say, um, preventing assessment or something, that might be used against them. And the courts tend to use one or two approaches. They either give you day-to-day -day services, one for one missed, or they, they give you services based on the totality of the circumstances but they don't have to give you day-to-day -day services. But right now, right now, we are getting day-to-day -day services. So just um, one more thing, and then we're gonna talk about my IEP. So the US Department of Education addressed, quote, compensatory services, unquote, in its COVID-19 guidance. Um, the obligation of districts is to proactively provide services to address lost services students experienced during the pandemic-related school closure. Following any school closure or the exclusion of a student with a disability as a result of COVID-19, each student's IEP team and as appropriate 504 team should decide whether the student needs compensatory services. Okay, so that's, that's, that's what we're talking about. And this IEP was really bad and it's not even really confidential like a settlement agreement. I can't say the family's name, but I'm gonna say the district and I'm gonna tell you what happened. It was LA Unified. The dad is an attorney. He went to the administrator at the school site in October 2020 and said, my son has autism. Here's a report showing that he has autism. He's being treated currently by a behavioral agency, and I want him to go to public kindergarten. So please, um, how do I start the process? And the administrator said, we're not doing initial assessments right now because of COVID. So let's 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 just like digest that. We're not doing an initial assessment. In other words, we're not doing the assessment that would get a person who doesn't have services services because of COVID. So I so he was referred to me by his ABA provider, and and I kind of scratched my head and called somebody that I know in litigation support in in the district. And I guess what I want to say is it's super useful. In, in a place like LA Unified, if you have anybody inside there that you can talk to because they can give you the real poop. So he said, that's totally illegal. I don't want to be like overt, but I will work behind the scenes. 
So he called her and he said to her, you need to assess this kid. Okay. So then what happened was some time passed and she wrote him and she said, like, we will be sending you an assessment plan when we get caught up. This was around the beginning of December, 2020. But right now we're backed up so we can't do this assessment for you. We'll be in touch soon. So I went back to him again and lo and behold, she generated an assessment plan and the dad signed it and returned it two days later in December. So um, I was really hot and bothered about all this and I brought it up a bunch when we finally did have our IEP in April. So if you ask for an assessment plan in October and you're not having your IEP till April, that's more than two months of missed services. But anyway, um, cause I publicly shamed her at the last IEP meeting. She said, she wrote me and she said, I want to have another IEP meeting to offer comp ed. And that was really unusual. I was just assuming that I was going to have to file for due process. So I was kind of like, Hmm, I wonder what this animal's like. And I thought, well, I think I'm not going to really say too much to her. And then when we go into this meeting, I'm going to ask her all the questions about how she delayed. Right. Right. Cause I've got, I've got my recorder going and a bunch of people there. So she, she admitted, she admitted that she did not process the assessment request in time. And I decided not to, I decided to save if I needed it later, the fact that I'd actually had to go to somebody inside the district and they'd had to, you know, to wrist uh, slap her twice. Uh, I decided that even though it would have been satisfying to have her admit that she was really actively violating the law, I decided to let it go. So then they had some special administrator that came in who um, I'd never seen before, and she was in charge of the comp ed award. They tried to claim that it was only two months. I told them, I said, no, it's at least three months. And I said, but you know, if you won't agree with me, I'm going to do process anyway. So it'll, you know, whatever we can't do here, I'll clean up. So here's what I got. Compensatory speech, a whole block of compensatory behavior to be used flexibly at camp or whenever the parent wants. Um, I didn't get OT because he doesn't have OT needs. Then they gave me assessments. They gave me a neuropsych. They gave me a functional behavior assessment. And they gave me a speech IE. And, and so that was like my little, you know, red letter day where I actually got something for somebody at the IEP. So I'm still going to go to due process because I want to get more and I can get more. And, and I also have other issues related to the, to the process itself. Like LA Unified never names who the non-public agency is going to be, which is kind of important to discuss. They say they can't discuss it at the meeting because it gets decided by some outside committee, which is illegal because the parents don't have any input. So I do have to go to due process, but it's just really a cleanup thing. It's not, it's not as if I have to go to due process and establish liability in the first place. So that was my comp ed IEP. Second one I've had in my career as a special ed attorney. Fascinating. We, um, we've got about 30 seconds here. I want you really quickly to tell us how we can get a hold of you at Tolner again. Toner Law Offices, uh, we're on the web. We have a form you can fill out for the free consultation. Got a lot of attorneys so we can help you. And we've got a lot of attorneys so we can stand up to the district. That's the other funny thing I wanted to tell you if we have time. So this special person that was there to award the comp ed says, um, boy, you guys have a lot of lawyers now. And I said, yeah, you know why we have that? I said, so that you guys can't push us around and we win all our cases. And he said, well, don't you already re win all your cases? And I thought, Bonnie, just like, don't, you know, don't blow it. So I said, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, Bonnie, they've written in, uh, somebody's written in and said that they uh, saw you uh, on the, there's a movie recovered and they didn't realize oh. your circumstances. Um, that was a long time ago, but, uh, yes, you can see Bonnie. Okay, I'm, in the still, film I'm still recovering. I'm still recovering from autism. I'm going to spend the rest of my life recovering from autism. Having a child <laughs> autism is a, is a, it, what's it? A trial by fire. 
But your child with autism who is way an adult now is an amazing adult and is a success yeah. story that we, that we yeah. all look to often. Um, he's leading his own life, so we don't we don't want to say things that you know disclose who and how no, he is. But I mean, he's, he's 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 a neat he's a neat guy, and he's got his own personality and his own life, and that wasn't something I was sure he can have. So, and that is something that he has, and other children can have, and that's why we fight for these services. But but he has a full life too. I mean, like anybody, you know, he's. Uh, like got a great job and is engaged to be married and is very happy individual. Like he's, he's this, he's the poster child for success. If you want to see you know, Bonnie. You know, what I, you know what I want to say about that? He's the person who he always was inside, but we had to get the autism out of the way. There we go. There we go. And, and he is a unique, wonderful, fabulous, polite gentleman. Um, As and and creative and uh, talented and all those things. So anyway, check that check out Recovered, and you can see Bonnie um, in that film and get a deeper appreciation for why she fights so hard for all of you, because she had to do it first for herself and for her child. Anyway, we're out of time, Bonnie. Well, I'm glad you're back. We love you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, I think so. I'll let you know if that proves not to be the case. All right. We'll look forward to Thanks knowing everybody. about that. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.